Hi everyone, my name is Daniela Agostini and today I'm going to be talking about a research study that applied remote sensing to understand land cover change in national parks. So one of the reasons why national parks were established in 1916 was to prevent inevitable commercialization in America's greatest natural areas. However, as society becomes more and more industrialized, urban areas begin to encroach upon natural areas, um, which decreases the edges surrounding national parks. And this reduction of natural edge or buffer zones can degrade biodiversity, vegetation health, and water quality within the park boundaries. So in order to understand land cover change in parks and test whether urban development is actually impacting national parks and adjacent areas, this study by Wang et al. utilized remote sensing of land cover change in northeastern national parks in the US. So the researchers in this study leveraged Landsat 7 remote sensing data to conduct their analysis. And this data doesn't have the highest resolution compared to other sources. Um, however, however, for this study, they only needed general land cover data. Um, so the Landsat data was sufficient for their analysis. The researchers also rectified those Landsat images. And then after that, they conducted supervised unsupervised and stratified uh, classification on the data. And this distinguished nine land cover categories, which include urban, herbaceous vegetation, deciduous forest, coniferous forest, mixed forest, water, wetlands, barren lands, and bare rocks. The researchers also performed ground truthing to confirm their analysis. Um, so in other words, they visited specific sites in the park to verify their interpretation of the Landsat data. They then used the ground observation data along with other land cover data sets to cross check their classified Landsat data. So for each park, the researchers looked for land cover change in four general areas. Um, they looked at the area inside of the park so the green area. Um, they looked at areas within 500 meters, within one kilometer, and within five kilometers of that park boundary. And this buffer analysis allowed researchers to account for land cover change along the edges of the park. Um, and that's important because impacts to those edges can potentially affect wildlife and vegetation within the park. So the study found that the majority of land change occurred in urban and forest land cover types. The results also show that urban areas within and adjacent to national parks increased significantly from 1970 to 2002. Um, and at the same time, there was a decrease in forested areas within and adjacent to that park boundary. So we can see this illustrated further in these graphs. On the left, we have graphs of um, urban areas within and near parks. Um, and we can see from 1970 to the 2000s, there's an increase in those urban areas um, in both of these graphs. And then here on the right, we see forest areas within and near parks. And the forested areas within the parks did not change too much um, over the past 30 years. However, we do see a decrease um, in forested areas within or within uh, five kilometers of each park boundary. So these results support the study's hypothesis that development and tree loss within and near the edges of Northeastern national parks has increased over the past 30 years. I hope you all enjoyed my presentation and thanks for listening. Um, please feel free to leave a comment on the forum if you have any questions.